Now, if you've been fly fishing for a while and you fish through the winter and you like fishing dry flies, well, you're probably already aware that sometimes midges are your best bet. Now, they're not just winter flies, but sometimes on a cold January afternoon, they're the only bugs out. So today's bug, it's a kind of fly I like. It serves a very distinct purpose and it's really easy to tie. And I found this one in Dave Hughes' 1986 American Fly Tying Manual. I don't know the history on this thing, and I doubt anybody does. It's just another one of these flies that's pretty much named exactly what it is. It's a midge, and it's kind of tied in Adam's colors. Now, Hughes says good sizes for this thing are 16 all the way down to a 26, and I'll typically have flies like this, or maybe a Griffith snat, in about two sizes, probably 18s and 20s. If the bugs out are any bigger than that, I might just fish a regular Adams, and if they're smaller than a 20, that's probably when I give up dry fly fishing and go to nymphs. Now again, this is a real easy pattern, but I do have a couple of tips I want to share. And first is for new tires. Anytime you're tying a particular fly in a range of sizes, say maybe a Caddis or an Adams in 14s, 16s, or 18s, always start with the bigger size. Tie all your 14s, then go down to your 16s, then your 18s. You'll really be surprised at how that helps you stay consistent. Now the next thing I want to mention, and this is really aimed to you veteran tires out there, it's this new tool by Hairline. It's their ceramic zirconium dubbing rake. And it's basically just a, a comb with some small blades in between the tines that you can use to pull out the under fur and something like a hair's mask or what I'm going to do today in this patch of muskrat fur. Now I say this is for veteran tires because this is really not a cheap tool. Add 40 bucks, I probably wouldn't recommend this to a new tire unless you're just a tool junkie and i know some of y'all out there are probably as bad as me but it is a pretty nifty little tool and this fly it's definitely a good one to have in your box especially if you're going to be doing any winter dry fly fishing so there's our adam's midge in the vise a pretty small fly now i'm tying this on a size 18 but dave Yu says you could tie this down to a 26. And when I say you, I mean you, because I don't think I could tie anything on a 26. Now I have stepped my thread down. This is a 12 alt, which is really about a 50 denier. Let's go ahead and catch it on. Now this should be pretty easy to break right there. Don't have to waste two or three seconds with your scissors. So bring it to the back and grab about eight or 10 grizzly hackle feathers or barbs from a feather. And I'm gonna catch it in about a body length. Maybe, should, eh, that might be a little bit more than a body length, but I think we're gonna be fine. Now, if you don't have too many, you can just go ahead and bury them. I'm gonna go ahead and snip them. Couple extra wraps, now I'll leave my thread in the back. And I'm gonna use this low tack wax. I got this from Jay Stockard recently, and I might like it just a little bit better than that hairline stuff I'd been using. And speaking of hairline, here's that tool I was telling you about. Pretty nifty little tool right here. And it made it really easy to just pull some dubbing out. And on this small fly, I don't need much at all. I'm gonna put a real thin noodle and maybe two inches at most, because I'm just gonna do a thin body up, maybe two thirds of the, of the hook shank. And if you wanna try to get a taper, go for it. I'm not really worried about it on this size of fly. And the next and last component, just some really small grizzly dry fly hackle. Let's see if this feather is gonna be about one and a half times the hook gap. And it's pretty close. And I'm not sure if you're gonna be able to see it on this small of a feather, but on the side of the barb that is, that I'm gonna wrap closest to the hook first, I stripped off a few extra barbs. And sometimes that'll help you get a cleaner back end of your fly. Sometimes it doesn't make a bit of difference, but we'll try it. And I am gonna use my hackle pliers here. These are the Umqua Dreamstream ones. And I loved these things. Loved as in past tense and I lost mine, but I just picked up another pair because I liked them enough. 
So they, they're really strong. We're gonna put five or six wraps around here. You know, it's not a big fly and it doesn't take a whole lot of dry fly hackle up here to keep it floating. But you know, I think that might've been six wraps right there. And one secret I'll tell you about these flies, I don't really worry too much if any of these hairs or, or, or barbs are sticking forward. As long as I can get my tippet through the eye, I'm fine with it. And remember, you know, you're gonna be trying to fit some six or seven X tippet through this tiny little hook here. So you really don't want to clog it at all. One other tip, when you're snipping the thread on a dry fly like this, don't actually snip it. Just open it up, put it around the thread, and then poke it through. That way you don't accidentally snip any of your hackle barbs there. And a fly like this, I'm not gonna worry about cleanup. I'm not even gonna put head cement on it. This thing's going in my box just like it is. So there you go, folks, at Adam's Midge. Very simple pattern, but under the right circumstances, this thing can be a killer fly. So I appreciate you watching. Y'all take care, and we'll see you next time.